Kenny B.D.I. Smith, and uh, this is my old stomping ground here, the Muddy Waters house. I, I lived in this house uh, probably, in, I was, this was my first place of residence, I'll say my first place of residence. Uh, I was born, stayed here for several years, probably five, four or five years here. Um, my, my father and a ton of other musicians would come in and out of this house daily, uh, out of this house. They uh, had so many rehearsals down in that basement down there that I would just sit down there with my little wooden chair and uh, watch them uh, do a lot of a lot of rehearsing with uh, for blues shows. I had no idea at the time how huge and uh, the big impact the music had on me, uh, me as a person and as a human being. But just from those musicians that came in here, uh, I really have a deep respect for them because they really, really taught me a lot about life and how to be a, 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 a man, a strong man and. Uh, those, those are the things that they really taught me before I even before I even was of age. They would tell me these little snippets of things. They, don't you do this? Don't make sure you do this when you grow up. Don't do this, but make sure you do this. And that came in all forms. I mean, that came in all forms of life. I mean, they was really uh, to me they was considered family. That you know, I call them uh, blues artists and musicians, great legends now. But definitely back then, they definitely all I knew them was family. I knew they, I seen them so much that they just was considered to me was family to me. I, learned, I, I literally learned uh, my drums from my father, literally from my father. Uh, when, they, when they rehearsed or when, they, when Muddy had a show, you know, it was always in the writer that all the kids could always go all the time. So we always had front row seats at those shows. And um, I got to see so many of those shows um, with them playing. I was really inspired with that. And also he would practice in the house with his little pad and I would try to get my sticks and just you know, try to copy them. Um, and back then, I think it was, I think back then it was, it was more just me connecting with my dad, just as a dad, a son, you know, just looking up as a, uh, to my father as a role model at that time. That's what it really evolved in. But I remember when it hit me, when it, when it, when the music really finally hit me, and this was ironic, I remember dancing in that room right there uh, to a 45 of, uh, Lightning Hopkins and my grandmother, and she just pulled me to her, and we were just dancing together, and something just struck in my head at that moment, and I said, you know what, I think I'm gonna play these drums, you know, just like my dad, and uh, from that point, from that point, uh, I think he knew that at the time, because for sure I got, a, I got a drum set right after that. I didn't ask him for it, he just got it, he, must, he just knew, he just knew, um, and I, from, that, from that point on, I just started really homing in and going to many, several shows with him, uh, I, at the time, I was to me it was more enlightening going to the shows. I think I was the roadie. When I first started going out with him, I think I was 10, 10 years old when I found when I when he really took me, I really truly out, like really out on the road road trip. And I thought it was the best thing in the world, just hanging out with all the musicians, you know, in this van, you know, they just driving down the road. Uh, I thought that was just a uh, uh, that experience. I looked to, I looked forward to that experience like every summer. The day I got out of school, I was just looking forward to uh, getting out and going to going on those going on some of those trips with him, you know, and bringing up bringing up school too. That was a, definitely a factor that every uh, every musician that I encountered in this house definitely uh, engraved in my head. You know, it's definitely get your education. You know, some of them would say, "Hey, I didn't do it, but you make sure you do it. You make sure you get it. Make sure you get it." You know, and it, and and. Truth be told, as a musician, I, I, I mean, I felt it in my heart. I wanted to go. I just wanted to play. I, want, I don't want to see nothing else. I just want to go play. But with a strong foundation, you know, uh, my, my mother, my father, and the musicians around me, you know, that, that they, they really honed that in to me. And they said, no, you do it, you know. And definitely, I'm thankful that they said that. And that, that brought to my attention, you know, it takes, it takes a tribe to raise one person. And, I consider those musicians, you know, part of my tribe. First time I ever, ever got paid, I was 13 years old, um, playing at, at the, Mil at the time it was the Milwaukee, what they call it, the Milwaukee Big Summerfest. Summerfest. Yes, it was a Milwaukee Summerfest. And I remember going up there with my father and he, and I actually, he got off the drums and he let me play drums. This was the legendary blues band, okay, the right. legendary blues band. That was the very first time that uh, 
He paid me. As soon as I finished, boom, he paid me. And I thought it was great. I was just, it was 50 bucks. <laughs> but it was yeah. the, uh, but 10, 13, 13 kid, with 50, 50 bucks, bucks in my hand was great. Yes, that was a, that was a lot of candy. <laughs> you know, yeah, for sure at that time. So, um, I mean, yeah, I was, I was definitely hooked. I was hooked on the music. I uh, haven't, haven't been on hook since. My mind is, my mind is still tending to shoot towards the music, uh, towards the blues, and keeping it strong and alive. And I'm, I'm, I'm going strong, going strong, full speed ahead, you know. And, and I'm hoping, and not to stop anytime soon. But one other thing that I have to mention is I played with another show that I had. I think it, that I went on a road without my father was with Sam Lay. He actually came over to the house, and I know I remember him and my father talking, and I remember just him. My father saying, take care of him, you know, yeah. Sam saying, no problem, you know, no problem. And he took me on the road. One of my long standing bands that I've been playing with maybe 17 or 18 years uh, with was uh, Mississippi Heat. I've been playing with that band strong, strong for about 17 years with that band, steady and steady and strong with that band. Uh, I've come across, I play with the Cashbox Kings. That's a band I play with, the Matthew Scola band. I mean, the. This list, we, you'll run out of film probably before right. I finish. But it's a blast, you know, all, all of these guys bringing something to the table and they're definitely keeping the music alive. I mean, they're, they're doing their part and I can feel that when we're on stage, you know. they, I, I, feel, I feel that when we're on stage, I feel that we all got the same thought in our head. And it's playing some great blues music and you can see it in the audience eyes too. They, they, they're definitely digging what we're doing. Every time I come over here to, to visit, I always look. I always look at the house. You know, I can see what I what I see is the vision that I instilled that that's engraved in my head. That's what I really see when I come in here. Growing up in this house, this was. I mean, I've seen many musicians. You know, uh, now I really like. I say now I really honor the musicians that have came and walked through these doors because at the time uh, when they came in, like I say, I would see them all the time. It was it was just a given thing. And that goes back to the same thing when I say, you know, him having a genuine and kind heart. You know, he, he had, he, 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 he brought. So he, when I say he brought, so he brought the music. Definitely, he brought us the blues, but he definitely brought something else. I mean, even in that aura, you know, I still can, I still can see the image. I still can see the, the image of him, even sitting at his table with his glass of champagne. You know, <laughs> sitting there, you know, playing some cards. I, I can, I always have that image. You know, these images in my head. I'm hoping, you know, that they really save this house and I hope that they really do something with it. It's a part of Chicago history. Just like you say, it's architect. This is some this is some deep, heavy history right right here. The blues for me is definitely engraved in my heart. I mean it's bigger than it's bigger than me. You know, it's bigger when I say that, you know, I don't I'm not looking for no attention or anything like that. I know in my heart if I'm I'm just trying to pull it out. That's what I really want.